This is the uh, interest that we are here for and Oxford University Boat Club women on the right of your picture. Oxford Brooks in that day glow yellow top on the left of your picture. I don't know about you, Henry, but I always found that this was the most nerve wracking part of the fixtures, trying to get up to the start and get level and be in the right place when there's no stake boats. You know, I found this took up a lot of my mental space when I did it. So what would be a good result for Oxford women? Because they're not, I don't think they're going to beat Oxford Brooks. Um, so within a length, that would be, I think, a great result for Oxford women. Two lengths, maybe not so bad. Anything more than two? I, I mean, you would expect Oxford Brooks coming off their training camp in Wimbledon to be going well. I know the Oxford women have just been on their training camp on the tideway, but what, what's a good result for them? Yeah, I, I think I think you're right. I think it's going to be hard for the Oxford women to beat the, the Brooks women. But I, I think if they could if they could have any any overlap by the end of the race, I think that would be a hugely positive result. And I think the, another thing I'd be really looking at as a coach is what's the quality of the rowing like? Are they able to to row the quality rhythm that uh, and consistently so through through these pieces? So. Um I always like to be, you know, if I was in the bows of a boat, just touching it up a little bit, get that little bit of advantage on your opponents in this situation. Absolutely. I think there's, a, there's definitely a bit of gamesmanship here. Like the, um, you know, the coxes will be trying, even now, will, will have been jostling a little bit for position, like Zoe was saying. The coxes will be really, really trying to put themselves in the, in the best position possible here. And you kind of almost want to, you almost want to be a little bit down, tap up to level, and then hope that they call go and you've got a little bit of momentum on the shelf. Yeah, personally, you know what, I'd rather be a seat down, but we'll have all the blades in the water be pointed in the right direction and be ready to go. I actually think the person who's still tapping up and then starts with bow and two's blades out the water is doing their boat a disservice, but that's my own personal opinion on it. Both Cox, oh, Joe Gellett's still got his hand up. A reminder that in the actual boat race, these crew will be starting from state boats, so they'll be held, but in these fixtures, we kind of have what we call a running start, so it's a free start. Sophia Bernal there, we're looking at the stroke woman Brenna Randall with the, uh, just having a little stroke there, Rihanna Sumter behind her, that uh, outstanding oars woman. They look like a complete unit, that boat from Oxford Brooks, don't they? And the Cox's hands are up for so long, why, why is the hands up for so long, guys? That will be because the coxes are not quite happy with where they're pointing. They want to make sure they're pointing exactly the right place to give their crew the best advantage. They won't have to steer off the, off the line. I think we're nearly ready to go. And yeah, we just were on the Oxford crew there. Nice, comfortable start from both crews. No fuss off the first few strokes. And just getting into their race start up at about 40 strokes a minute there. So it looks like the Oxford crew on the right of your picture there are coming over quite sharply towards Brooks. They started quite a big distance apart. And actually, it looks like Brooks have kind of held that position alongside um, the the line of boats. And, you know, Brooks, I think, uh, and Oxford are dead level at the moment. But Oxford did have a little, a little wiggle over there to get a bit closer. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's a fantastic start from Oxford there. They're right in the mix. And uh, I, I think that's probably the, the move that I would have taken as well, to just close that gap. I agree. They, they did start pretty far over towards the bow side of the track. I just want to close up because I think the stream is more towards, well, I think it's pretty much where they're right in the middle of the boat there. So I think the both boxes are doing a great job here. So just uh, half a metre or so between the blades as we look at Oxford Brooks, who are leading by about, I guess, a canvas metre or two. Um, how close does Joe Gellert, the Oxford... Uh, Coxon come towards Oxford Brooks you know and risk upsetting his crew who are slightly down at the moment well at the moment both crews are being warned uh, to move apart so actually this is always a difficult one because I feel like quite often when both crews are being warned both Coxes just take that to mean I'll just stay here and <laughs> hope for the best so it looks like they've stayed pretty close I mean crews close together is fine if they're pointed in the same direction what you can see now is that they're actually starting to converge so you see a bit of pain on the face there of the Oxford stroke woman Annie Zakis as Brooks just slightly edge out. I think Oxford have got to be pretty pleased with this start though. They kind of just headed Brooks and they're still right there in contact. And this is really important, isn't it? That the Oxford crew on the right of the picture hang on to Oxford Brooks at this stage. 
Absolutely. So the bend right now is in favour of Oxford. It's worth about a third of the length, and they really want to make sure they capitalise on that. See, both boats have shifted down into their rhythm. Oxford Brooks came down a little bit earlier and have come down a little bit lower and are moving, which is quite an imperious sign. Yeah, it looked like Brooks settled down much sooner, didn't it? And Oxford stayed up a bit higher. But actually, that shift onto the race pace for Oxford did look strong. It didn't look like a sag down. It looked like they really pushed out onto, onto their race pace. But I think Brooks did use that opportunity there just to keep squeezing out. You can see that Brooks look like they're really pushing over to keep Oxford, you know, tight around that bend there. I like what they're doing off the back end of the stroke, Brooks. They kind of got that bit of time. They rock over together, slightly more hurried in the Oxford boat, but they're still aggressively harrying their opponents. Oxford need to make use of this uh, Fulham Football Club bend as it goes. the river goes round towards our right. Absolutely. We can see the blades coming close together now as we come off this, uh, this Middlesex bend. The crews will be coming on to a straight. Both crews are being warned and the blades are overlapping. Yeah, so just a reminder that the umpire for this race is Claire Harvey, who um, did row at Cambridge and also for a long time at Thames Rowing Club, international umpire. So you see Joe there make that turn. He was being warned quite a lot there, um, getting increasingly frustrated noises coming from the umpire. So he looks like he's taken that turn there. And I think they've done a good job of holding around the inside of that bend but you would have you know if I was coxing that boat I would have wanted to to be pushing on there I, rather than holding I think this is a perfect race because at the moment I'd say great result for Oxford because this this powerhouse eight that won the Ireland Challenge Cup in that very close race against Penn who dominated in the US scene last year and if Oxford can hang on to this Oxford Brooks eight that that is a great result for them at the moment they're doing just that Absolutely. I think this is probably one of the best Oxford women's boats we've seen in, in quite a few years now. And if anything, it looks like they're, they're actually holding ground there, maybe even moving a little bit. It's really impressive stuff. And the attack is there with the sunglasses, really digging in. Lucy Edmonds behind her from Pembroke in the sixth seat. Sarah Marshall, uh, sorry, Annie Sharp, really gifted oarswoman. I think she's made such a difference in the boat. You can see how tall she is and really locked on well at the front end. Blade going very flat. She looks a great athlete, doesn't she? I think so. And I think some, having someone like that in the programme is pretty massive because she's, she's someone that knows how to win races. And unfortunately for Oxford, it's, it's been a tough time in the last few years and they've, they haven't had that success. But just putting someone in there who really knows how to take advantage of these situations is going to be huge yeah i completely agree i mean success begets success eventually doesn't it you know once you once you've got used to winning you keep winning so important for oxford to to start to to turn that and you know i i get what you mean martin about this potentially being a good result for oxford but ultimately you want to win every race you're in don't yeah. you yeah yeah to be fair there's five minutes on the clock we um have heard that these are three five minutes races so there's the five minute and both crews wind down as the umpire shouts five minutes that's kind of just over under a length to Oxford Brooks would you say yeah it didn't look like they'd quite broken away clean, cleanly there did it yeah I'd say so I think it looks like almost three quarters of a length maybe maybe a length so I, I think that's a really encouraging start for Oxford I think I think if, if that if the race continued Brooks were in a very good position there almost a length up on the inside of the next bend which was worth about two thirds of a length so I think if it was a full race, Oxford would have, Oxford Brooks would have dominated that one. But I think as a as a start for this new Oxford crew with the with the new coach, I think that's a really promising start. Yeah, I mean, what did you make of the rhythm in the Oxford boat? You know, I think looking at Brooks, you could see really solid. They weren't phased by anything going on or the close blades. Uh, what about the Oxford rhythm and the Oxford style of rowing? Their new coach, um, Alan French, has been working on them with. You know, I thought it looked a little bit hurried, perhaps. They looked under a little bit of pressure as they made that transition down onto race pace. But what I really liked about it is that actually, you know, because at that point I thought, oh, is this going to fall apart? But actually it didn't. Mm. And they seemed confident to sit a little bit down on another crew and keep doing what they were doing, which I think is important to have that conviction in your own rhythm and your own power and your own ability. 
massive challenge for Oxford win. I don't know if they're going to start down or they're going to start by the amount they finish down on Brooks or they're going to start level. So I would have said they should start level, start really, but um, we'll maybe off. they're going to start down a bit on Brooks. Oh, of course, the Oxford again, women, well, we're happen, looking at them the there on the left of our picture, they are going to have the outside of the Surrey Bends. Uh, there's the famous Harrods Furniture Repository. Um, it's flats now. Hammersmith Bridge just there and uh, Oxford are going to start down by the margin they or maybe they're not actually it's Balpair just moving up what do you reckon I mean I wouldn't start down if the, the point of these fixtures is to get a good race for Oxford so that doesn't seem like a sensible a sensible option I would have thought if I was their coach I would want to start level at least yeah and it looks like this is going to be from a standing start uh, this piece I guess it could be running but um Maybe they're going to paddle off together. Joe Gellert with his hand up on the right, the uh, former Hampton schoolboy. Cox, yeah. the 2022 Oxford women. Sophia Bennell, the Cox of Oxford Brooks in the day glow yellow. Britain's uh, premier rowing university, really, Oxford Brooks. There he is, Joe Gellert, and Iatzakis. Yeah, just taking all of it in. She looks pretty happy, doesn't she? I guess... Uh, maybe with that result and they're going to paddle off both crews so maybe we're going to have a running start from this as opposed to a standing start yeah, it looks like it and I think if you're in the Oxford boat right now even though this is a five minute piece I think if effectively you've almost got to think about it as a, as a one minute piece they have to really assert themselves on the outside of this bend it's a bit of a sluggish start there for that first stroke Brooks I think had their blades in when Oxford was still at backstop so they're going to need yeah. to make sure they get a really chunky start here and there's a go and this is a massive piece for the Oxford women on the right of our picture they've got to hold the Brooks boat right round the outside of that Surrey bend I guess we're looking saying if they can keep within a length and a half and can keep within a length that's that's result that's fantastic maybe a couple of lengths Brooks will be wanting to dominate this I think a little more than they did the last piece really absolutely I, I think I think if you're on the outside here your only goal is to hold overlap and that's exactly what the Oxford women will be practicing doing now and it and it's a great opportunity in, in one way because this Oxford Oxford Brooks boat and this boat's probably trying to trying to win the Remnant Challenge Cup at the end of the summer so I mean they're a real class outfit and this is exactly what you want to test yourself at yeah the Remnant Challenge Cup is the top uh, event for women's eights at Henley of course there won't be any internationals uh, going to the Olympics at Henley this year so uh, the Brooks eight are looking to seize the chance to win the Remenham and this Brooks 8 will be the um, the main unit that goes to Henley there they are just have a comment on their row in there Zoe I think the thing that's really impressive about Brooks is that you can put you know they've got four eights out today I feel like you could put any of the women from the four they into this boat and it would still look really tidy and really really neat they they aren't about the individuals they are about moving their boats forward no matter who's in the crew they have a really strong sense of team which I don't think I've seen in another boat club in this country for a long time yeah that's a great shout what do you reckon on Joe Gellert steering there he's got a bit of gap between him and Brooks and Brooks are edging away nearly to the length margin just uh, two minutes into this piece Henry. I personally think that Joe's doing a, a good job there I, I for my for my taste I think the Brooks boat's a little bit too too uh, too tight to the bend there they're probably not quite getting the best of the stream so I think I think Joe's doing a solid job there so he was being warned out actually around Hammersmith Bridge so he, Joe was being warned away you could see the flag from the, the shot that we were getting um, when actually it looked like to me like Brooks were actually coming towards them but now they've come around the corner like you say quite tight so it'll be interesting to see if Brooks now try and push back a little bit into their water and but Joe's given them plenty of space which I think is a sensible decision here I'd say that Oxford have still got the overlap I'd say they even maybe won a metre back on Brooks after Brooks went out off the start there which uh, Oxford edging back which has got to be encouraging for the dark blues well this is where as a cox you can play a massive part because you know I don't know if I was in the boat I'd be saying look this is two thirds of the length to them so all we need to do like Henry was saying is stay with overlap when we get onto the straight that's when we can start moving again it's important to remind your crew that you know even if they're moving a little bit that doesn't mean you're losing that might mean that you're actually still winning the race because they're not using the advantage fully 
Yeah, I think looking at the Oxford women there, I mean, they look quite good. A little bit more time, perhaps, than they did in the first piece. I think there's, you know, ways they might improve. We, we spoke about um, Annie Sharp's fantastic catch at the front end. Maybe some of her crewmates could just be a little bit more close at the front end. I'm looking up in the bow seat for Phoebe Mountain, perhaps maybe a little closer at the front end. There's improvements they can make, is what I'm saying. I think the rhythm looks better than in the first piece. I think it looks a bit more confident. I think the first piece, maybe by comparison, looked a bit nervy and actually now it looks um, it looks a bit more solid and, and you know they look like they're trusting in, in what they've done a bit more here well this is fantastic for the Oxford women they've got come back to half a length they really moved on Oxford Brooks I mean there was me thinking this Brooks 8 is going to dominate this feast they had the inside of the bend they haven't taken that advantage and there's only what just a minute 10 seconds left of this second five minute piece to go yeah, this is an incredibly impressive performance by the Oxford women here. Like, if this was a full boat race from this situation, my money would almost be on the Oxford women now. They've just <laughs> got a hold over that. They've got a hold over that for this last little bit of the bend. And, I mean, in this piece, in, in, on this day, it's 50 seconds. I, I think they can probably do that. If you're in the Brooks boat, you're, you're desperate to break contact, and then you can, you can have the advantage of the river uh, further on. I mean, this is a straight now, and this is, this is an important thing about knowing the river. It's knowing when you're on an actual straight bit of river and, and making use of it. So, you know, I would always talk about really trying to accelerate out of the bend. So you're coming out and you're really, you know, you're putting your foot on the gas and you're you're starting to make distance. And I think that's what Oxford are doing really well here. And both crews comfortable up at 35 and a half strokes a minute. That's pretty much the pace they'll be going over at the boat race, I think. And maybe they might come down to about 35, 34 and a half. But that's their racing pace already this, this time of the season in January. Yeah, absolutely. I, I think on the, on the steering front, probably Oxford, Oxford women have, have, have given away a little bit of ground there. They've, it looks like they've come towards the, the Middlesex side of the track and they need not do that. Um, and Oxford Brooks have moved, moved out that way as well. And okay, now the race is over. But I think a great performance by Oxford. I'm really impressed with them, with Joe Gillett's coxing uh, for the first sort of two thirds of that pot. Perhaps gave a little bit too much ground in the last. It'll be interesting to see what happens now if they do this last piece with the bend in in Oxford's favour. I know they want to go down the course a bit, don't they? Because, you know, to give Oxford that bend. Um, it's no doubt Brooks are more powerful. You saw that off the start and that, that they nearly got out to a length. But I think what really impressed me about this um, Oxford crew, the Dark Blues, was how they hung on and then edged back in the middle of that piece um, in, in what looked like a better rhythm around the back turn. It's also about what you're training for, right? You know, we know that Oxford are training for this race. They are training for um, this distance. What are Brooks training for at the moment? They've probably got, you know, the women's head yeah. at the front of their mind, but ultimately their big events are going to be 2K or just over 2K at, uh, at Henley. So we're not, you know, it's always hard to see what, what their, what their different, uh, different stages of training are. So how knackered are these rowers going to be at this stage of the race? Um, you know, two, five minutes done, one to go under their belt. What, what physiologically, what are they going to be experiencing? Legs screaming, lungs <laughs> screaming. I mean, this is really good. This is good training from a physiological, a scientific point of view to do these shorter pieces with a short gap in between them because you are still getting that lactate effect um, and your body is having to work to clear it and you're having to get used to the feeling of actually racing and performing and thinking clearly with those kind of physiological effects going on. So I think this is, is great preparation for Oxford. So can Oxford hang on to Brooks at the start? Will that take anything out of them for this piece? Um, there we go, both crews moving. Uh, they're not level by the looks of things. Maybe they're going to paddle round this bend and give Oxford the advantage of that final Middlesex bend towards Barnes Bridge, which to my mind would be exactly what Alan French, the Oxford dark blue coach, would want. Yeah, I think so. I, I think this, this last piece is going to be a real nail-biter. I think you do have the faster crew in Brooks on the outside, but the advantage is worth a fair amount. It, to my mind, it's worth about two-thirds of a length. So, And that's kind of the margin we saw in the last piece. So I think it could be really, really close at the end. Yeah, I'll tell you what, that would be a sensation if the Oxford uh, women, the dark blue women, can get their bows in front at any stage in this piece. Um, 
think another thing to, to sort of factor in is that one of the hardest bits of steering of this course is through Barnes Bridge, which if you're doing it actually two abreast, which is rare in the boat race ultimately because mm. usually one crew is ahead, that is, that's quite a tricky thing to do. So it'll be really interesting to see how that happens, how that works, if these crews are still... Um, you know, it's still side by side. Yeah, that's a great shout, Zoe. Um, let's look at the Brooks psychology. Um, what are they taking? They've won, they've won the two pieces. Okay, maybe not by as much as they might have liked, particularly that last one. What's their psychology for this race now? They probably want to do more than they have done. Um, I mean, I think they're used to winning by <laughs> long, big margins, and, and they take pride in that. Mm. Um, so I, I imagine that they will want to they'll probably be saying right let's let's go this is it you know let's finish them off so the cox the brooks cox the american sophia banal very experienced cox on the tideway she steered this fixture as we said last year and uh, well it's straight for a little bit and then we've got the bend in favor of the oxford dark blues who are on the right of the picture just a reminder if you're Tuning in, this is the third of three five-minute pieces between Oxford Brooks with the Dayglow Yellow Tops, Britain's premier rowing university, and Oxford University women on the right of the picture. I'm Marty Cross, and with me, Zoe de Toledo and Henry Fieldman. Great start there from both crews. I think Oxford went off a little bit more aggressively than they had done in, in previous races and I think if anything they might have just squeezed out a little bit ahead Brooks you can see now steering over a little bit to, to close up that gap but I think this one's going to be quite fast and furious. Not quite as much time around the back turn as they had in the first five minutes I think Brooks slightly chasing it compared to what they did earlier. Yeah I would agree I think the, the Brooks boat to me looks just a little bit pulled off the front with a handle whereas I think in the first two pieces it looked really quite well placed hooked and, and levered now just a, perhaps just feeling a little bit of pressure being down and under pressure knowing that the next few minutes they're going to be in a disadvantageous position on the river I don't know what Alan French the coach said to them if he said anything or if it's just come from Joe Geller and the conversation with the stroke woman Annie Adzakis but uh, the Oxford women the dark blues have gone off with a real sense of purpose they are leading this race it's the first time that the bows have been in front I think in this contest and they have got the Middlesex bend to come round Barnes Bridge and you look at the two crews and actually the Brooks crew looks tidier you know their blade work is um, sort of sharper at the front the timing is better but that Oxford crew is doing something really impressive under the water when their blades are in the water okay maybe they're not going in quite together they can work on that they've still got time but they are holding despite looking like the slightly untidier crew yeah there we see the oxford brooks boat zooming in on the stroke brenna randall and then behind her rihanna sumter grace richard martha Bertels, going down the boat amelia regan ariana ford in the three seat there b dutton and claire ferrick in the bows and uh, I was going to say I really do like watching Annie Sharp's blade in the sixth seat of the Oxford women. Uh, she's, she's so consistent about what she's doing there. And I think setting that boat up beautifully, really taking the weight off Annie Adzakis in the stroke seat of the Dark Blues. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, she is absolutely getting locked up and levered. There's hardly any pull on the handle off the front. She's really levering the boat. And I'm sure that the, 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 the ladies around her are going to be feeling that. And they, they, they can't help but be sucked into that kind of rhythm that's coming out of the six seat. Just to shout down, Phoebe Mountain up in the bows of the Oxford boat. Ella Stadler, the president, in the two seats. Must be feeling really pleased with what the crew's doing. Tessa Hanning, Freya Willis, Sarah Marshall. Annie Scharf, as we talked about in six, and then the stern pair, Lucy Edmonds and Annie Atzakis Cox by Joe Geller, who, uh, how would you read his steering on this piece, Henry? I think he's doing a great job. Like, he's, he's, he's in the advantageous, advantageous position, I should say, and he's just keeping out of trouble. OK, right, as I say that, they're actually getting a little bit close <laughs> together. I think he probably could take that bend a little bit tighter now, but I think up from the start to Barnes, great job. But he's done a lovely job there of actually turning, you know, he pushed that, OK, he pushed it, but he he did it nicely now he's turning into that bend and he's he's given his crew a good few seats just on that move i think that was really slick going through barnes bridge there 
So we haven't got the clock on the screen, so we don't know how far through we are, but there's probably at least a minute, maybe a minute and a half left or something like that. And Oxford, the dark blues on the right-hand side, as you can see, do have their bows slightly in front. There will be a massive effort from the Brooks 8 on shore in the last minute of this race. They won't want to lose to Oxford. I think that Oxford Brooks 8 looks actually pretty pretty good right now. They're really getting on, getting attached to the front now. The blades are getting close. I think the momentum is with Brooks just... Yeah, that was an interesting bit of, bit of steering there. I think um, Soph and the Brooks, the Brooks crew tried to take advantage of Oxford being warned but went a little bit too far and actually ended up being warned herself. So I think that was a, a slightly, uh, a slightly too aggressive move. Having said that, their rhythm is great and they are moving through them. So a reminder that the Oxford boat, just looking there in the background, do have the advantage on the side. They went out early in this race, as they had to do because Brooks had led them on the first two five minutes. Can the Oxford boat finish with their bows in front? That would be a massive scalp. I think Brooks are coming through them. I think that's dead level now, and Brooks seem to have a little bit more momentum. I think they've just kind of got that efficiency back. You, know, you were saying earlier they look like they were tugging a bit at the back end that looks like it's settled down a little bit now but here we go Oxford are raising it again oh this is going to get very tight here would you want to put Brooks off their rhythm to try and keep that lead at all I think it's something you might you might want to do but it, it you just never know which way it's going to go 50 50 in a clash I, I, personally for me I wouldn't risk it I would say the same. I'm extremely risk averse, perhaps for obvious reasons, and I would also want to give my crew a clear run. And I think actually Brooks did themselves a bit of a disservice there bouncing in because they had the better rhythm. Yes, they're on the outside of the bend, but I think their rhythm could have taken them through. And actually that last clash did uh, did disadvantage them. And if anything, Oxford have now put themselves back level. They have, haven't they? It looks like the boats are level and we probably must be coming up to the five minute mark. And uh, the Oxford woman, you can see her look round from Phoebe Mount in the bow and the Oxford woman. She's really hurting, as all those women in these two boats must be. You can see Brooks again being warned. I think they might be going through to the finish, actually, rather than, than five minutes here. But now, look, Oxford have surged right up. And I think they've used that little bit of, of wiggling back and forth from Brooks. Look at this. Look at this. This That's move, this last 10, 20 strokes from Oxford, they've put themselves right up there. And actually, I think it's still Brooks being warned. Look at that rhythm from Oxford. Look at them go. That is sensational. OK, they do have the inside of that bend, but this is a, an amazing result for the Oxford women and their coach, Alan French. And also fantastic practice for the boat race to take it out on Brooks as we're coming up to the finish. That's exactly the kind of performance I wanted to see from the Oxford women. That was really, really gutsy, that move there. Yeah, an amazing, an amazing move by them. I mean, they're, they're now almost, it looks like they're a length up. And if that bend is worth two thirds of a length, they, they've beaten them. Ox, they, they, they would have beaten them on a straight course. And they're, and they're still moving, they're moving away. They're putting water into them now. That's crazy. So this must be, all right, 2022 crew apart, this must be one of the best Oxford women's crews we've seen in recent years. It, they didn't look that tidy, but just the performance, the way they dug into that, and um, Brooks have stopped now, I think they've, they've called it a day, but... Um, the way they just held on and just mm. didn't get perturbed about being slightly down I, I really liked watching that yeah I would agree I think what the Oxford, Oxford boat showed there is resilience in so many instances being down being clashed with um, being in a very disadvantageous position on the river and they, they never they never gave up so I think that's uh, hats off to them I think that, that, that for me is the best Oxford women's boat I've seen in many years yeah, I'm, I'm still thinking that boat Joe Gellert steered, you know, with Erin Rulick in the stroke seat and Posner at six and, uh, you know, it was a pretty strong boat. And uh, but Oxford do look pretty happy. That's the uh, Oxford foreman Freya Willis, the Aussie, just lying down in the boat there. She absolutely knackered. And uh, no doubt um, she has put everything in. You could see for them to surge away in the last part. I mean, where did that come from? Just like to the crew that won the Ireland Challenge Cup pretty much. That was a statement of this is our house and you're here by our invitation and we're going to show you what we're doing here. 